Christian, have you noticed that you are constantly being put in the position to take sides, even against other Christians? That maybe they're Christian leaders that you used to trust, but you don't anymore because they took some position that you don't agree with? Have you noticed that there is a fomenting of conflict amongst Christians, especially on social media? If you wanna find out how we should be and what would honor the Lord in the midst of all that conflict, make sure you stay tuned for today's Redeeming Truth. When I was first a Christian, the first thing that I was so burdened by was the lack of unity among Christians. It was one of those things where I thought, why can't we be united? What, what, what are all these differences for? Why, why do we have denominations and networks and tribes and, and celebrity followings? Like, why can't we just be all united around Christ? So as a new Christian, that was a big deal to me. And it was something where if you would have met me when I was like 20 years old, I would have said, I want to be a part of bringing unity to the body of Christ. Well, now I've been a Christian for 28 years, I can see the naivete of that whole thing. Mm -hmm. The differences are significant. Um, they're not, they're, they're, they, they, they hit at some very core issues and they're not going to be resolved until Jesus comes. Um, however, in saying that, there is still a sense that we are to be united, right, guys? Mm -hmm. Like oh, yeah. when you think about some some texts in the New Testament, here's one. First Corinthians chapter one, verse 10 says, Now I exhort you, brethren, by the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you all agree, and that there be no divisions among you, but that you be made complete in the same mind and in the same judgment. I, I, what I find striking about that text is before telling them to all agree, he calls Jesus to the stand and says like, hey, I'm calling Christ in this, in this command right now. I'm going to remind you of the Lord Jesus Christ now. I want you to be mm. united. So this is this is something that is not just on the apostle's heart, but he knows this is something on Jesus' heart. So mm. um, Ephesians chapter four, verse three, here, here's another one, Kevin. Yeah, Paul calls us there, calls the church to be eager to maintain the unity of the spirit in the bond of peace. And he goes on to say, there's one body and one spirit, just as you were called to the one hope that belongs to your call, one Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is over all and through all and in all. Mm. Yeah, if you're if you're looking at that text and making observations, you're gonna see the word one and all yep. and unity over and over again. But I find it interesting where he says to maintain the unity of the spirit, that we already have a unity with other Christians because of all these things we're united on. Yep. And so he says, maintain it, and he may be eager to maintain it. And I've and I've, he says, uh, make every effort to maintain it. That this was something that was really important. Kyle, you have Romans twelve and Romans fifteen. Yeah, Romans twelve or sixteen. 16. Yeah, or, or uh, sixteen rather. Yeah. yeah, it says, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Uh, I think if we go on to verse 18, if possible, so far as it depends on you, live peaceably with all. And this is yeah. interesting because I think these are it's speaking of two categories of people. We have um, live in harmony with one another. That's one of those mm -hmm. famous one another statements of the Bible speaking about unity inside the body of Christ. And then if possible, so far as it depends on you, live at peace, uh, li live peaceably with all. So that's not necessarily unity, but it's not purposefully causing division. Yeah, I find it interesting that um, in verse 16, it's right after or right before he says, do not be wise in your own estimation, but be united, live in harmony with one another. It says, do not be haughty. Mm -hmm. Don't be prideful. Yeah. That there is a connection between the fracturing of unity and arrogance. And then Kyle, can you pull up verses uh, 15, uh, chapter 15, verses uh, five to seven as well? Because he comes back to this idea a little later on in Romans. Romans 15. Verses five. five to seven. Yeah, may the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accord with Christ Jesus that together you may with one voice glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, welcome one another as Christ has welcomed you for the glory of God. So the way I'm supposed to be with other Christians, it says in this text, is I am to welcome them as Christ welcomed me. Mm -hmm. So when, when you think about these texts and you superimpose these texts onto reformed evangelical social media, mm. what are your thoughts? 
Yeah, well, I would just reiterate the the other thing we were talking about concerning the attitude uh, that we're to have. And so just to kind of double down on that, going back to verse 2 of Ephesians 4, yes, we're to be eager to maintain, but but the spirit that we're to maintain that, he says, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, mm. bearing with one another in love. Mm. And in the original language, it's putting up with one another <laughs> in love, right? So that that's the spirit behind that. And mm. so I would say uh, genuinely or, you know, generally speaking, I, I see that greatly lacking in in our correspondence and dialogue with one another as we're trying to strive for for that unity yeah i'd go a step further and say we ought to be ashamed of ourselves Mm -hmm. Uh, we're we're being a bad witness to the world uh the 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 fact that scripture has to remind us not to be haughty is just evidence of the fact that our heart our flesh will naturally drive us towards i'm going to be right i'm going to make my point frankly i don't care who i offend or who i hurt uh, if you don't come along with me, then you, you you may not know as much about the Bible as I do, and so there's this this sense that that this is kind of the the respectable sin of our age mm. right now. Uh, that mm. Reformed evangelicalism uh, has this attitude of haughtiness, has an attitude of tri- uh, tribalism. You know, I'm going to take my stand, and whoever follows me is with me, and whoever's not with me is against me, and so you know. I'm going to break protocol a little bit. And I mean, I'm just looking at every passage that is talking about unity and talking about uh, selfless love. And, and, and to your passage, Kevin, you know, maintaining uh, unity of spirit and the bond of peace and, and, uh, and deferring to one another, the practicing this, this self-effacing love. This love that we're practicing for one another is not mushy gushy love. It is agape, mm-hmm. self-sacrificing for the good of somebody else rather than, I'm going to say my piece and peace out. Mic drop. If nobody likes that, then that's on you. And again, that attitude is haughty. It is it, it is shameful before the Lord. And so, if we're not careful, if we don't check our flesh and we don't teach ourselves, you know, First Corinthians one, First Peter three, Psalm one thirty three, Ephesians four three, Philippians two two, Second Corinthians thirteen eleven, Romans twelve four to five, and on and on and on. We are commanded to do this, and yet for some reason it seems to be ignored. And I feel like we yeah. could do a podcast on this every week and we wouldn't address it enough. Yeah, we've already <laughs> done a podcast on mm-hmm. this uh, about a year ago. Mm-hmm. And we're coming back to this idea because, I mean, when I think about it, as following my Christian life, there was in the early 2000s, this thing called Together for the Gospel mm-hmm. that I had so much hope in as somebody who'd kind of given up on the idea that we're going to be united. And then I see these these men, mm-hmm. covenantal, dispensational, Baptist, Presbyterian, um, just uh, charismatic, Mm non-charismatic guys coming together, Mm -hmm. put making sure the main thing is the main thing, putting aside their differences and showing this kind of unity. I was excited about Mm -hmm. that. I really was that, hey, we we could actually, I I mean, I remember thinking this is revival. Mm -hmm. This is, this is a revival that's taking place right now. And now we don't even pretend to be together for the gospel. Those days are over. It is so tribal, like you were saying. And what happens with the tribe is that when you're, when you identify yourself with some teacher or some podcast or some ministry, you are either forced to say whatever they say is correct, no matter what, or you end up saying, oh, I can't trust them anymore because of some issue. Mm-hmm. And there is there is a fracturing that's going on right now that that even in, in Christianity, I knew, okay, we're going to be fractured on baptism and all kinds of different things, but at least we're going to be together politically. Mm-hmm. Like I could trust for most of my voting life that we are going to be united on political issues. Well, that day is gone as well. Mm. So there is just an absolute fracturing of our entire movement right now. And I wonder, as you guys look at that, what do you think the reason for this is? Why do you think this is happening? This is, this is something that is clear. It's obvious. So where is this coming from? I'll, I'm going to start it and say, I think there is a sense of worldliness. Mm-hmm. It, that, that is leading to some of this. I think the vitriol of cancel culture, I think with the delivery system of social media, um, couple that with, with a sinful heart that is still, that still needs to be sanctified. Mm. And you get this perfect cauldron for conflict that we should be able as Christians with God's peaceful spirit living in us to be able to fight through and work through and not even have an issue with, but 
mm. but we do. So, so I think worldliness is an issue there. Any, any, any uh, response to that? Yeah, I would say pride, ego. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, to the text that you were reading earlier about the, the spirit that we're to have with one another, uh, I was going to respond and say, but Kyle, that doesn't get you likes mm -hmm. and followers, right? And so on the one hand, I definitely think there's this aspect of, of social media um, being a, a type of megaphone that um, you know, further extends these types of divisions that we see. But on the other hand, I would say, you know, out of the abundance of the heart, the person tweets or X's mm -hmm. or whatever we want to call it now. Um, and so in that sense, it's, it's revealing what's, what's there within the hearts of professing believers. But I think at, at the core, it's, it's pride, mm -hmm. uh, it's ego. Yeah, and John, as you said, the the world is is creating the perfect boiling cauldron for this. That's a that's a good analogy. Mm -hmm. uh, Satan is wise uh, in understanding how to manipulate the hearts of unbelievers and believers, how to cause us to stumble, how to get us to look away from Scripture, away from Christ, to ourselves, to each other. Uh, and I think uh, social media, though it having its benefits and purpose uh you know for the gospel and for good in many ways is the perfect um proving ground for arrogance and it's the perfect testing ground for self-branding in the gospel and so you know when, when we're going on there it's it's designed i think algorithmically to to you know to trigger a short attention span to look for the next hot button issue it's designed for this uh, th this type of interaction that that causes um, uh, a, a stir of our emotions in the moment and then demands a reaction to those emotions in the moment. When the book of Proverbs would call us to patience, to wisdom, to, uh, to you know, analyzing facts and, and looking and, and speaking carefully, fewer words, uh, and the world is demanding of us quick, mm -hmm. um, immediate responses and actions to or against each other uh and again you know with with satan's mindset he understands that when the church is unified it's impossible to to counter mm -hmm. and so when the church is divided when it's balkanized when it's it's fractured into pieces and into tribes uh, that are at war with each other his job is really easy and so if we lack the wisdom to discern that those attacks are coming at us and those things are being put on a silver platter for us to engage in, then, then we're going to fall right into that trap. Absolutely true. I think that um, what we're seeing today is a couple of things. Courage on social media is not equated to being a unifying peacemaker. Mm. That that's that that there is a one upsmanship, there is a sarcasm that is rewarded mm -hmm. on social media. And what happens is that when guys realize that, they begin to use Jesus and use the truth to build their platforms. Mm -hmm. And you know, on that on that platform primarily, it it feeds and it rewards conflict. Mm -hmm. And what and who rewards it, but the other people who are watching it, mm -hmm. and they the cleverness of it. Because I, because I, Romans twelve ten, I think. I mean, correct me if I'm wrong. I think it says outdo one another in showing how clever you are on social media, right? I think that's <laughs> exactly. Paul was thinking that. <laughs> exactly. No, outdo one another in showing honor. Yeah, yeah. It it is it is a, a worldliness, and, and the reason I say that is because James chapter four, when he describes the conflict going on there, mm -hmm. he summarizes it with you adulterers. Yep. So all of your conflict is a result of adultery with the world. You are have become worldly, and you've brought that mindset into the church. Mm -hmm. And it so I think somebody at this point, well, what about calling out false teachers? You know, what about that? Like, you're supposed to do that, right? Mm -hmm. You're supposed to call out false teachers. And my response to that is absolutely. But the way you talk to a false teacher is very different than how you talk to a brother in error. Mm -hmm. yep. And the way you talk to a false teacher is different when it comes to so so there's brother and heir but when the brother has imbibed heresy in the sense that you believe this you teach this you are attacking the gospel and you are going to go to hell as a result you 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 become a false teacher in that moment so now i have to call you out right but i've got to do it in a way that is kind and gentle like it says in first peter chapter three but that's not cool that's not that doesn't get clicks and calling somebody privately 
Well, that doesn't build my social media either. So there is there are these conflicting ideas going on right now on social media. I think it all comes from from a sense of worldliness. Any other any other addition to that, guys? Yeah, I mean when when we're we're operating on, you know, the assumption of this one aspect of the possibility of social media engagement is going to define everything that I do. So the possibility that I need to confront a brother in error uh you know it, it is the way that now i'm going to act in every situation because like you said it gets it garners clicks it, it's rewarded by other people saying oh i like how you did that that was that was uh interesting engaging Ooh, man you dunked on that guy right. and and then that fuels the heart to say okay the next time i do this i'm going to figure out how to be more pithy and clever and dunk even harder and then when it comes to the correction of a brother in error, it's not, I fear for your soul and I love you and I desire unity and desire to see you restored in, in truth and in, in holiness. It's, I'm going to mark and avoid you publicly so that everyone else can see that I was the first one to do it. Hmm. I was the first one there. I have more discernment and wisdom than the rest of you. And that's going to get me a thousand more follows or whatever it is. Um, and so again, the, this this boiling, bubbling cauldron of social media is it's such a two edged sword. We have to ha pr be able to uh, discern and practice so much wisdom and how we're going to use it. And we we've seen our friends, uh, guys that that have been on social media a long time, figure this out and start to do it really, really well. And we can emulate those guys that they're using it for encouragement, for the building up of the body, for sharing truth and scripture, uh, for confronting when need be but for the sake of restoration just like matthew 18's purpose is and so if we can do that then i think we'll we'll be living in a safe zone yeah and i was just going to say i think the thing that should drive us we've talked about the heart of christ uh, we've talked about the authority of god's word as we see in various texts of scripture uh, but then i also think about the high priestly prayer of jesus where he reveals that heart mm -hmm. and he actually prays to the father for the unity of the church and then he gives the purpose as he prays verse 23 of john 17 so that the world may know that you sent me Mm -hmm. and love them even as you love me so a driving influence for us should be the watching world right mm -hmm. so there's an apologetic and evangelistic purpose for it apologetic because it provides this living demonstration that our faith is effective it's, it's mm -hmm. real and then evangelistic because it's proclaiming to the watching world which oh by the way is dying and going to hell that god loves them and sent his son to die for them um so if, if we're thinking of those things then i think that helps to mm -hmm. you know drive us to this true spirit of unity yeah yeah absolutely and so i would say one reason this is happening is worldliness i think another aspect of it is we've been infiltrated that there is a real sense that um this is satan's tactic mm -hmm. is to take people who look like christians sound like christians act like christians insert them into the christian community and then they cause division when they're on the inside this is yeah. something that jesus warns us about in matthew 13. Mm -hmm. this is something that jude talks about in jude verse 4 this mm -hmm. is something peter talks about second peter 2 2 to watch out for people that cause division mm -hmm. and yet for some reason, because they're on social media, we give them platforms, mm. those who cause divisions. Mm. We, we, we elevate them as those who should be followed and listened to. Their podcast should be listened to. They should be the ones that people are, are getting their information from. Mm. And it's like, what, what the body of Christ needs to understand is that, no, this has always been Satan's tactic because Jesus says in Matthew chapter 12, verse 25, a house divided against itself will not mm. stand. If you want to destroy the revival that was taking place in the early 2000s in reformed evangelicalism, you infiltrate it, you introduce division, and you slowly fracture it. And that's where we are Divide yeah. and today. And that's yes. that's why I think the Bible takes division so seriously. In fact, it's, you know, mm -hmm. Titus 310, this is the the really the one area that fast tracks you to the exit door of the of the church. That's right. You know, the factious person, the one who creates a division from the body to to lead them away from truth. You warn that guy once, maybe twice, and then you have nothing nothing more to do with them. And if we listened to that passage and actually practiced it, I think we'd be a lot safer.
if you think about it now with any event let alone what's going on in the world global warming russia ukraine january 6 misinformation covid the vaccine george floyd trump biden immigration drag queen story hour mm. i mean all of these things are things that are fracturing our society but if you're a christian you need to add to that classical versus presuppositional apologetics biblical counseling versus integration pro-life versus abolition incrementalism unending abortion versus immediatism churches open or close true revival at asbury or not churches services on <laughs> christmas day or not christian nationalism female pastors the chosen millennial positions yoga pants head coverings worship style save america and preach the gospel or just preach the gospel with new conflicts coming up every day i think you're just being an alarmist <laughs> <laughs> no these are all things that yeah. god's people are being forced to take a side on mm -hmm. and because we're fomenting conflict that side becomes if you don't agree with me you are not faithful or you're not a christian mm -hmm. or you're stupid and then what happens is that christians continue to have the people that they trust fractured more and more and more and more yeah. to create these tribes with tribe leaders who are then able to say you do this and don't do that and i feel good because i'm in a tribe because i'm a paul and i'm a peter and i and it's like wait a minute this is exactly what paul was talking mm -hmm. about we are back there right now because we do not listen to what i mean i think the, I think Satan's minions, the, the Marxists who've, who've infiltrated our church, believe Jesus more than we do. Mm -hmm. When he says a house divided against himself cannot stand, they just go, well, there we go. We'll just yeah. divide it. We'll just divide the house then. Yeah. And we'll cause it to fall. Um, one other thing I want to bring up in this is we as reformed uh, we're not reformed we're calvinistic but more reformed we're, we're evangelicalism mm -hmm. we have this we're protestants and so we we began in a protest and we have this phrase calls always reforming mm -hmm. which i think is being used against us because we're constantly looking for something that's wrong mm. in order to fix it because we're always reforming so always reforming plus house divided against itself cannot stand you just bring that into into reformed evangelicalism and here's what it looks like you take a simple unified position like homosexual activity and attitude desires and actions are sinful been clear for centuries for for, forever <laughs> and then what you do is you take an evangelical that says well not necessarily mm. and now you have two evangelicals saying the opposite things and what do you do you bring a guy in the middle to say well both sides have their strengths and weaknesses mm -hmm. and so we're okay we can all be evangelicals and disagree on this and you just moved everything away from the consensus mm -hmm. to the middle and then you just keep moving it and that's yep. what's been happening yep. for the past 10 to 20 years is this dialectic has been moving us more and more away from these clear biblical teachings unequivocal these are things no female pastors clear there's no way to get around mm -hmm. it unless you're dishonest with the text mm. we just keep moving it slowly over and over again and at the end of the day when when we do this kind of thing i think god's people are left saying what in the world should i believe who can i trust rather than seeing guys like rc sproul and john MacArthur, who disagreed on a ton of different things but who could come together united in what matters and really do solid ministry together that mm -hmm. we've all been blessed with and people will be blessed at blessed at for for, for decades to mm -hmm. come any any response to any of that i would just say the uh, the need the desperate need for biblical discernment uh, and and understanding the difference between biblical commands and biblical convictions you know we are all commanded to uh, obey christ to worship on uh, you know as, as the body of christ to put off sin and put on righteousness there's certain things we're commanded to do and then we can all carry convictions that we live by that are not necessarily biblical commands but perhaps our conscience is telling us hey you know what uh, i was saved out of a background of of alcoholism and so i'm not going to drink anymore or mm -hmm. you know i'm i've decided i'm i'm only going to eat fish on fridays or whatever it is that that's yeah. a conviction and so much of this tribalism is conviction driven and we're elevating it to the level of biblical commands mm -hmm. so that i can now call you a heretic right and that there's such an arrogance and pride in that that yeah. it, that if you don't hold to all of my convictions 
I don't think you're holy or righteous. And we're, mm-hmm. we're all going to have a lot to answer for before God if we live that way. But mm-hmm. if we can show care and preference to one another and live in under biblical commands in unity, practicing our preferences in our households or in our faith community, then we can still respect and love and care for one another, even though you might decide to go to church on Saturday, I go on Sunday, you wear a blue tie, I wear a red tie, whatever it might be, we can still love one another, self-sacrifice and care for one another. have local church practices do their thing without using those local church practices or preferences as a judicial authority over everyone else yeah. and then hold them to a level of heretic yeah. and and this is uh, we're seeing this on social media we're seeing Absolutely. this in, in in the in the the sphere of dialogue as people are throwing the word heretic or throwing the word false teacher around because you disagree with me on a preference or a conviction rather than on a biblical command yeah yeah and i was going to say you know, the most important thing for us to recognize here is the distinction between primary or essential doctrines, Mm -hmm. those things that have to do with the character and nature of God or the gospel Mm -hmm. versus secondary issues, which we can be brothers in Christ and Mm -hmm. lovingly and gently dialogue with each other Mm -hmm. on. I think that's Mm -hmm. the most important thing. The authority of scripture obviously is is mm-hmm. what rules the day, but mm-hmm. it's knowing the difference yeah. uh, between those two. Yeah, so I, I wanted to have this conversation for two reasons. One, to give the flock that's entrusted to our care at Redeemer some discernment as they look on social media, as they become aware of what's going on in the world. I know most of them don't look at social media, so praise God for that. <laughs> um, but the other part is, I, I wanna leave us with this with this thought from, mm-hmm. from Proverbs chapter six, where, Verse 16, there are six things which the Lord hates. Yes, seven which are an abomination to him. And the last one is this, one who spreads strife among brothers. Mm -hmm. Take that to heart. Yeah. Thanks for joining us for Redeeming Truth. Hey, don't leave yet. If you're part of the 75% of people that watch our content but haven't subscribed, this is your time. Go down and find that little subscribe button and click it. That way you will know every time we come out with more content here from Redeemer Bible Church. Also, if you would like to give to this ministry, this is the only way that this ministry can happen. Make sure to click the link down below to the give button and you can give to the ministry here at Redeemer. And then finally, if you wanna know more about what's going on, check out this podcast right here.